Today's guest hails from Germany and made her mark in the US as a competitor on The Ultimate Fighter. She's a fully tattooed, soft-spoken, intelligent, real-life badass. Fucking girl power. Ladies and gentlemen, my girl, Katarina Lenner. Well, thank you so much for finally taking the time out to do my podcast. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> you look so beautiful. Was today a training day? Yes. And then I was like, okay, I should I should straighten my hair and put on some makeup because we're recording the video too. <laughs> do, are you, uh, is there a big fight coming up? Not yet. So okay. I have to go back to Germany, unfortunately. Oh. In four or five weeks because um, they renew my visa right now. And I'm not allowed to stay in the States as long as it's not done. So I probably go back for, I hope, only two weeks. Okay. Two weeks. Yeah. Is that where all your family is? Yeah. So, okay. I mean, that's pretty cool. So I see my parents and my dog is still there. So, oh. um, yeah, I'm going to spend time with them. That's nice. So how old were you when you first came to the States? Did you come over by yourself or...? Um, so the first time I got here was 2017. Okay. Mm -hmm. So not that long ago. Not that long ago for my fight, for my first fight for Invicta FC. Yeah. Um, I came to Los Angeles and after the fight, I stayed for, I think it was three weeks and okay. traveled a little bit in California, Arizona. Yeah. Since then, I'm always here oh, every year. So this is your second home then? Yeah, yeah, definitely. So I've been fortunate enough to travel a lot to Europe and the UK. And I know there is culture shocks. Buildings are smaller. They're older. Different plug points. There's lots of differences. What was the culture shock for you in America? What are some things that you just will never get used to? Um... To be honest, like in Europe, when you go out to eat, um, you always dress good, you put on some makeup. And I was pretty shocked when people like right after the, uh, straight after the training, they put on their shorts and shirt and they were like, okay, let's get food. And I was like, you go out like this? I mean, come on, you have to get ready, dress and take a shower and put on some day or two and stuff. And they're like, no, we go all like this. And I'm not, nah, I'm not going to do that. So they had to wait for me. I took a shower, uh, yeah, put on some makeup. And then I remember the first time when we got to, to the place, I was like, okay, now I understand. Like almost everyone looks here like a mess. Like it's a normal thing. No one is touching yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> It's true. <laughs> well, I'm half Polish. A lot of my girlfriends, Ukrainian, Russian, and it's the same thing. When they go out, it's like they're ready for the runway. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's, so you're going to you're bringing everybody's morale up. You're making us North Americans bring up our game when we go out. Yeah, <laughs> I you, re to. you remind me of this TikTok video of this girl, uh, German girl. Uh, she's been in the States for a long time and her parents come to visit her and uh, they're at a restaurant and she goes, oh, so I have to, mom, you're supposed to look the waitress in the eye. You can't just ignore her. <laughs> is that is that a thing? Yeah. <laughs> so you, you ignore your servers? Um, not ignore, but like it. So here they all the, they come to the table all the time and they ask everything. Okay, do you need something? And in Germany, it's like you sit down because no one brings you to the table. You oh. sit down and then you wait. Have to wait for the waitress. And sometimes they're not even coming. I had moments in Germany where I was sitting like 30 minutes and I was like, hey, hey, I want to order food. <laughs> oh, my God. Um, yeah, because they don't care. They don't get a tip there a okay. little bit, you know, so they get paid each hour and they don't fucking care if they get like, <laughs> a big tip or not because they're like, I, I get paid anyways, you know. Yeah, That's, And then you're that... just like, yeah, one Coke. <laughs> <laughs> they don't give a shit. That's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So how did you become a fighter? Where, where you know, I, I, being a pro wrestler, you know, you grow up, you're offered, you know, dance, gymnastics, being Canadian, hockey, but still it's not normal 
per se to be introduced as a female into f- into fighting. It's still kind of taboo. So how did you get into the world of fighting? Um, I'm not even sure, but I was like super interested in boxing when I was like 30, uh, 13, 14. I think it was because of my dad. He watched all the boxing matches and stuff. So I started with 14 with like fitness boxing or went there like twice a week. So nothing serious. Yeah. Um, And then when I went to college, I moved to another city and um, I finally decided, okay, I want to start boxing, like real boxing. Yeah. And then I started boxing. And after college, I went to another city and I was like, hmm. I think I want to fight because I remember I saw Chris Cyborg against China uh, Carano. So yep. this was the female first female fight I've ever. I watched. remember that mm-hmm. strike force, yes. and I was like, "Oh, that's great! I want to do that! I want to do that!" So um, yeah, and then I started training, and I really fell in love with it. Like I went there every day. Um, and after two years, I guess it was two years. Yeah. I was like, I want to fight. I want to fight. And after the first fight, I was like, okay, I'm not going to do anything else. (laughs) That's amazing. And what did you do uh, in college? What did you study? I studied healthcare management. Okay. So you were always kind of in the fitness medical. Yeah. So I grew up, um, playing soccer and table tennis. Yeah. And, um, so I always did something like I was a very active child and teenager um, and I was super interested in nutrition, health management, um, stress management. So I decided to um, study the health management. Yeah. And what do your parents think of your chosen career? Um, the first few years they were like, oh, you had such a good job. <laughs> and because we all know how bad payment is especially in the beginning yes um so the first few years i was struggling really bad with money Mm -hmm. and i had to quit my job to train full-time so they weren't really happy about it but i feel like it was more they've been scared and afraid i me being broke all the time not being able to pay my bills um but meanwhile they even watch ufc fight Okay. Um, yeah. So they fully into MMA. They love to watch <laughs> fights. They watch my fights too. That's cool. Yeah. Do, or do they do do they get anxiety before your match? Like as your as your parents, there's probably like ooh. Yes. Yes. A little bit. So yeah. they always hope I'm not getting hurt too bad and I'm not getting injured. Um, sometimes they're also like. Hmm, I'm not watching it live. Just text right. me afterwards. You good? Yeah. And when I say I won or whatever, even if I lost and I'm like, hey, I'm good. I'm not injured. Then they want to watch it. They're good. They're good parents. <laughs> yes, they are. Definitely. <laughs> I'm very happy about the parents. <laughs> so with wrestling, pro wrestling, you know, obviously it's different. It's, uh, you know, it it's theatrics as well as you know it's kind of like sparring but it doesn't feel good over time but it certainly isn't like what you do so the sensation of actually punching somebody in the face do you remember the first time you like punched an an opponent in the face um yes i mean (laughs) is it like your first kiss (laughs) so (laughs) I, I remember the first sparring sessions and I was like holding me back because yeah. I didn't want to hurt anyone. Of course. Um, but like when you do with other girls, also with beginners and someone are like, oh, I'm going to punch that bitch hard and you get hit like hard. And I, th- I feel like the first few months or even years, you have that ego, yeah. you know, and you get emotional and then yeah. you want to get the heart back. And um, so I feel like the first few sparring sessions, I went home every day, every time with a headache. Really? Yeah, it was not uh. healthy. <laughs> and because now you're also not technical, you know, you just try to kill each other yeah oh yeah (laughs) and that's what it's like too when you start uh pro wrestling like you get more finesse you learn how to work smart not hard but it takes its toll on your body and especially in the beginning when it's all ego you're you know you're fine 
and then you pay for it as you age. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. What is your favorite fight movie? Favorite fight movie? Um, I guess it's uh, Warrior. Warrior. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So. And- no, go ahead. Sorry. No, you can. Oh, okay. I was going to say, do you listen to uh, specific music before you fight or does it change all the time? What's your pregame vibe? Mm, so I always listen to hip hop, rap music. Um, but the first few fights, I wanted to listen to hard rap because I yeah. feel like I need to get angry and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> and I love it. Yeah, but, but meanwhile, I'm like, I even listen to reggaeton, Afrobeats, <laughs> like just um, good vibes, you know? Yeah. Like, because at the end, it's fun. I do it because I love it. I do it because, yeah, it's fun for me um, and not because I want to hurt the other person. So I just go in and uh, I'm in a good mood. And uh, yeah, it's like a sparring session, you know? I love it. And do you have, like, I think most of us female fighters, be it pro wrestlers, be it boxers, MMA, uh, there's like a a part of us that we feel like we need to accomplish. We need to do more. We need to prove that we can hang with the guys. So we do everything, you know, we push ourselves beyond the brink. Do you do anything that's not so hard for yourself? Like, do you do yoga or are you into any spiritual practices or like the yin to your yang? Like that's not hard rap. That's not sparring something to balance you out. Yeah. So, um, I do meditate every day since two years. Yeah. That's like my routine. Yeah. Um, it took me a a while to get used to it. And you, I feel like, yeah, everyone knows how it is to wake up and you're like, ah, nah, today I don't feel like yeah. doing it. But then you have to do it when you feel like you don't want to do it. Um, so, but meanwhile, I do it every morning. Like, even if it's only five minutes, it depends. Yeah. Sometimes it's 20 minutes, good. sometimes five minutes. But um, I tell myself, Yo, I want to do it. It's good for me. So, yeah, that's what I do every day. Um, I write a lot, short nodding, for oh. example. It helps me to clear the mind. And um, uh, easy, yeah, I go for walks a lot. Oh, that's nice. Nature, grounding. Yes, yes, yes. It's really good. I've, I'm missing a little bit in Vegas because, yeah. um, I mean, I often feel like in the night, okay, now I want to go for a walk for an hour. <laughs> when it's not a thousand degrees out. Yeah, and a lot of people are like, hmm, you should not walk here around when it's dark. <laughs> You're like, I can handle myself. Thank you. I can handle myself. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, yeah, I miss it a little bit because like where I live in Germany, I, I can go out at 4 a.m. in the morning and no oh, one wow. cares. That's cool. It's like super safe, you know, and um, I live um, next to a huge river and nature mm-hmm. park. So it's only mm-hmm. like a five minutes walk away from me. Yeah. So all the time I feel like I need to go out and stuff. Um, I can. Yeah. Here It's a little bit different, but yeah. So I'm just noticing your tattoos on your hand and your wrist. Are those like crescent moons? And wh- what do you have on your wrist? So here is like a mandala. Yes. Um, I did that in Albuquerque, actually. Really? Yeah, like it was like super spontaneous. A teammate of mine was like, hey, I have a friend from Atlanta. Um, He's here for two days and he tattoos. And I was like, okay, I'm going to try it out. (laughs) I'm just going to go for it. Yeah, so I went there and he uh, he rent like an Airbnb and I went in there and there been like four guys, super stoned, <laughs> hanging on the couch, you know, and uh, I sit, I sat down on the table and uh, I was like, yeah, I want a mandala and um, he painted it and I was like, okay, it looks good. Um, so um, he did it and he did really good work. Yeah, it looks <laughs> beautiful. It. Thank yeah, God. I'm, I'm happy about it. <laughs> um, and here I got like the third eye. It's the third eye. Okay, that's what I was wondering. Yes, and the Om signs ah. here. But 
Yeah, I might have to redo it because, um, you know, the tattoos on the hand, they don't laugh that good. Right. So. And I imagine with all the taping and the sweating. and mm, Yeah. I love it. But I'm not done yet. I want to do my whole neck. Yeah. But it's it's so painful. And um, so I got this and it took like two hours. It, that took two hours? Oh, my God. So you have all spiritual tattoos. Yes, a lot. A That's lot. I love that. That's what I I knew you had a lot of ink, but as we're talking, I'm like, oh, <laughs> I think that's a third eye. Oh, I think that's a Mandela. Oh, interesting. Yeah, yeah. So um, I got this in um, when it was in September, I guess. Mm -hmm. And um, after two hours, I was like, okay, you have to stop because we wanted <sighs> to do a lot of details. Yeah. Um, and I was like, it's so painful, but I want like a whole neck. And um, yeah, I'm not sure when I'm going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> bit by bit, I'm sure. <laughs> um, so one thing that I that I've watched change in professional wrestling is, you know, it used to be kind of two women to every 50 uh, pro wrestling uh, dudes and mm -hmm. we have a good relationship but now it's you know we're getting kind of like to the 40 60 but there's always been a strong sisterhood amongst the female firefighters what would you firefighters I'm a firefighter too uh, fi <laughs> <laughs> pro wrestlers cool. thank you <laughs> my whole life is men ah! <laughs> uh, what, what would you say the relationship of MMA and UFC is it a tight-knit sisterhood is it more competitive are you closer with the guys like what's the relationships like um it actually depends uh where you at so oh, okay. i made both i have both experiences like um the girls are super close want to help each other are super nice but i also been to places where they like pitching around you know not want to train with you because maybe they're gonna fight you in the next 10 years or something uh, okay. because the scene is pretty small. Of course. Girls. Yes, of course. So it's interesting because in my field, it made us tighter. And of course, you're always going to get those, you know, the odd bad apple who can only see competition. But yeah, I guess when you're actually fighting, it's it's a bit of a different, a different vibe. Yeah. And yeah. would you say fighters date within the fighting world more commonly? They date? Yeah, do do a lot of uh, fighters date other fighters? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I feel like guys often have, like, normal girls, like um, not fighters. M maybe they have girls they trade there, but okay. they're like, competing, you know? Yes. Um, but almost all the females I know are dating fighters. Interesting. That's so interesting. Hmm. But I'm honest, like, when I think about having a normal partner yeah. who has no interest in fighting and has, like, a normal job, and um, I think it's pretty hard because my schedule is different from a normal person. Of you know, course. I have to go to the gym, like, twice or three times a day. Um, then when I'm in camp someone who doesn't do it doesn't know the mood doesn't yeah understand the mood swings when you're right. on a diet when your body hurts um when you're like no i don't want to go out you know sometimes in yeah. camp all i do is go to the gym eat sleep yeah you know it's kind of boring for normal people yeah um so i feel like it's pretty hard um to understand that makes sense and i would say that's exactly the same in the professional wrestling world mm. and even in the firefighting world it's becoming that way you, you know your your job requires so much of who you are and it's so niche that you know how are you going to not end up with somebody who understands your life yes yeah that's true and even when you're like um, fully into fighting you know like where else do i go i go oh, to yeah. the gym yeah. <laughs> So all the it's people true. I see are in the gym, uh, maybe at the grocery. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, it, or CVS. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> at the supplement store. <laughs> yes. Yes. So, uh, yeah. 
Oh, that's funny. Uh, so over my career, you know, one of the reasons I started this podcast is I wanted to really get to know the the person behind the persona, behind the fighter. And I find it's the Internet is really limited, especially what they know about women fighters. You know, they they say who you are, where you're from, how much you weigh, how tall you are, and maybe a fact and then all your fight stats. Um, when you do interviews, do you find that you're asked a lot of the same questions as a fighter? Oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> it's all, I mean, it's always, how did you start MMA? Yeah. When was your first professional fight? How was your experience in the Ultimate Fighter House? When is your next fight? Who you want to fight next? It's always this. Yeah. Is I mean, there... for fight fans, it's also interesting yeah. to know how she started, when she's going to fight again. Of course. I feel like uh, people really want to know, okay, who is she? Like, what does she do in her free time? Yeah. Um, that's why Instagram got so popular, too. Like, yeah. stories and stuff. People want to see what you do throughout the day. Um, what you think, what what movies do you watch, you know, like, I feel like they want to know everything. Yeah, I get it. Uh, is there anything that you'd like my listeners to know about you that they wouldn't be able to find maybe on your Wikipedia or maybe through Instagram? Is there anything about you as a person that you'd like people to know that maybe is hard to just put out there on social media? Um, <laughs> I feel like there are a lot of things. Yeah, to be honest. tell but, me. I mean, um, because my social media is all about um, fighting and competing, training, and OnlyFans. Yep. Uh, so, um, OnlyFans is make that money, girl. Yeah, it's <laughs> it got like my main income. Okay. To be honest, yeah. I mean. I, I didn't even know what it is. It's kind of fun, so a funny story. So I wanted to visit my friend Thai in uh, Thailand. Okay. Thai in Thailand. <laughs> um, <laughs> and um, I couldn't go because COVID started. Okay. So they canceled the flight and stuff. And um, she was stuck in Thailand. So she was living before in Las Vegas, but yeah. she's um, from Australia. And she was stuck in Thailand because there were no flights and nothing. And after one month, I was like, girl, I just have a question. Like, how do you, how do you get paid? Because, I mean, Thailand is cheap, but you still need money to survive, yeah. you know? <laughs> um, and even if you have a job there, it's, like, pretty bad pay. For sure. And she was like, yeah, try OnlyFans. I started it. It's really good. And I was like, what is it? <laughs> and she was like, yeah, it's bad. And you have to have friends, and you can chat with them, and sell pictures and stuff. And I was like, yeah, okay, I'm going to try it out. And I did it. I subscribed. And I remember the first week I was like, hmm. And then I was like, okay, I'm going to try it. And yeah. I made so much money the first week. And I was like, okay, I'm going to continue doing that. Really? Um, mm, so I live from the money like every month easily. Like, wow. Yeah. And I'm super, super happy about it and super grateful because uh, if I wouldn't have it, I couldn't stay in the United States, you know, all the right. time to training camps here and don't worry about money. Um, also, like all the traveling and stuff. Yeah. Well, good for you, girl. You found a side hustle that fits into your life and you can still fight and do what you love and you get to make all that content at home. It's beautiful. Yeah, you can work from <laughs> everywhere. So when I decide tomorrow I want to go to Mexico, yeah, I still can work. You know, that's a really good thing. Um, and the other thing is like, it's funny because um, all my American friends are always like, she's German, she's not prudish. <laughs> like they they see like Germans, all uh, these people with all the fetish stuff. <laughs> totally. You just walk around with a gimp mask, right? And like a bodysuit. And a big dildo. That's what I assume. Yeah. <laughs> no? Is that wrong? <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> and, uh... <laughs> and there's just like Rammstein blasting in the background. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sounds great. I actually walked out to Rammstein uh, one. <gasps> oh, I love that. I love That's that. Pretty good. How, how do you choose your entrance music? Do you switch it up or? 
I switch it up all the time. Yeah. And most of the time it happens when I uh, go for a run. Oh. So I'm running and I'm listening to music on Spotify. So I put on different playlists. Yeah. And then sometimes, you know, when you got this feeling like, okay, this is a song I can work <laughs> out. And then you go in your mind, like through the whole fight, what's going to happen. Totally. Yeah. And so then I'm like, okay, that's my song for the next fight. Nice. So it's just whatever's hyping you up at that time. Yes. Yes, definitely. So as a professional wrestler, there's tons of misconceptions about us. We're dumb, we're on steroids, you know, the women look like porn stars. Is there any misconceptions about UFC fighters that are completely wrong that you've kind of learned? So here it's not that bad, but it, for example, in Germany, where the MMA scene is like super small. Mm. And um, when I started, it was like, okay, all the females are gay. Like, uh, really? You know, they're, yeah. Like, um, all the females are gay and it's like, they look like men, um, you know, the steroid thing too. Yeah. And, um, Unfortunately, they don't say we look like porn stars. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> I would take it as a compliment. <laughs> yes. Well, you know what? I, I digress. Sorry. It's specifically like 90s porn stars, not just like porn stars. So like, you know, like the, the Pamela Anderson, bleach blonde, big boobs. Like now that I'm saying it out loud, there's absolutely nothing wrong with it. But exactly. She's a pretty woman. Yeah. You know? Oh, <laughs> I, I love Pamela Anderson, like barbed wire Pamela Anderson. Yeah. She can do no wrong. Yeah. But I, yeah. I think when I was thinking more, it was like, I guess, 15 years ago. And that was kind of an insult when mm. maybe women didn't embrace their femininity and the power that it brought so much. Because, yeah, if someone said that to me now, I'd be like, oh, why? Thank you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, do you have any close friends? that are fighters or would you say most of your close girlfriends are fighters <clears throat> most of my close girlfriends are fighters yeah 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 who would you it's really the thing uh, sorry because you, it's really the thing because you spend so much time in the gym right you know um i mean i have normal friends too um yeah. but most of them are fighters too and okay. even pro wrestlers oh yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> anyone i know anyone that's uh on tv i don't know if no, but uh, maybe you know Des. Um, Des. Des. Yeah. Des. 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 Is she in um, L.A.? See, she is in Vegas now, but okay. she was in L.A. She's from California. Hmm. You know what? I'll look her up because there's not that look many her of up, us. Yeah. yeah. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> um. What would you say? that the UFC's perception is with, or MMA in general, the crossover between fighters and pro wrestling. Like did Ronda Rousey and Brock Lesnar, did, did they do anything for the scene or is it kind of comical? Um, I feel, mm, so Ronda did a lot for the scene. Okay, Ronda did a lot for the um, scene. She, I mean, she was the first female fighter in the UFC. Yeah. You know, like uh, Dana White was saying for years, there's not going to be a female fight. And Ronda made, uh, Ronda made it happen. Um, <clears throat> I love Ronda. I mean, she got so much hate and also like yeah. now going to WWE. Yeah. And I feel like, hey, it's the smartest move she ever made um, money wise. You yep. know, um, she's successful there. She gets paid pretty good. Yeah. Um, and Brock Lesnar made, yeah, came to the UFC afterwards. Yep. But, but still, he had that fame. He got a good paycheck in the UFC and like 90% in the UFC don't get a good paycheck. Ah, okay. So um, I think WWE or wrestling is good. Um, it's good for MMA, for sure. Yeah. So it's, it's a good business transaction. Yeah. Yeah, oh, that's sure. interesting. That's interesting. Because uh, the crossover for us, like Ronda Rousey, it's kind of the same thing. It's like, this is good for our business, merging our worlds together. But I always thought, yeah. like, do you guys think it's comical? <laughs> 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 okay, I'm going to do a pro wrestling pop quiz for you. Are you ready? <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay, do you know what a bump is? A bump? Yes. 
when you run through one? <laughs> it's close. So every time a wrestler like hits the mat, mm-hmm. that's a bump. Okay. So what you would call a break fall, probably. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What is a clothesline? I don't know. <laughs> what do you think a clothesline is? Clothesline is... Um... I don't know. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, it's when you put your arms straight out and then you take somebody's head off with a straight okay. arm. So it's like <laughs> if someone has a rack of clothing drying and you ran into it and you took your head off. Okay. Che- cheesy city, I know. <laughs> <laughs> if I would know before you asking me these questions, I would call my friend Dazzler. Like, oh, okay, tell me everything about pro wrestling, please. No, that's not funny. Then that's not funny. <laughs> um, can you name two female professional wrestlers outside of your friend? Um, I Ronda Rousey. <laughs> sure. Yep, that counts. She was just on the pay per view. Oh, and what was her name? That, that's like a super pretty girl with the fire red hair. Uh, Lita? Or, oh, Eva Eva Marie? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Good. See? Nailed it. Uh, how long on average does see, it... See, I, 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 I think the female pro wrestlers are sexy too. Yeah. All the time when I see them, I'm like, oh, they look great. <laughs> yeah, see? It's, it's a good business transaction for all of us then. Yeah. <laughs> How long, on average, does it take a female wrestler to get into hair, makeup, and costume before a fight? How long do you think it takes? Hair, costume, and makeup? Yeah. Mm, Five hours? You know what? Half. Two and a half hours, I'd say, on average. Yeah. Okay. Is wrestling fake? No. (laughs) Oh, I love you. (laughs) Is UFC fake? No. I like that. What were you going to say about wrestling and fakeness? Um, I mean, of course, it's entertainment. Yes. You don't have to forget that. It's entertainment. But I feel like when people say, like, yeah, wrestling is fake, they forget, like, all wrestlers are athletes and they right. have to train a lot um, and they do real wrestling. They can get hurt, you know? Um, and that's kind of sad because in my opinion, they're athletes. Yeah. They're athletes, but they do also the entertainment part. And I think that's like the most respectful, honest answer. And that's how we feel about it. Like it's entertainment, but you know, it takes a toll on our body. We train so hard and just like you, not everybody makes it like, you know, it's competitive. Yeah. So. Actually, I got invited, I think it was 2017, um, for the WWE um, tryouts. No in way. Germany. In Germany. Mm-hmm. And you know what? I didn't go. <laughs> Good for you, girl. Show them who's so. boss. Well, you know what? <laughs> I So that was probably, so you just came to America to start your fight career in 2017, right? Mm-hmm. So in my opinion, I worked for WWE in 2006 as a as a wrestler. I think the best thing you can do is build your career elsewhere in a professional sport. And then you take that notoriety you get and you then go to WWE. You are so much more of a commodity because you're already bringing a fan base. You're not dispensable. So in my opinion, if WWE calls you once, they'll call you again. Okay. Well, so, let's see. And, and I mean, I'm still young, you know? Yes, girl. <laughs> and also, like, women are changing the game for professional wrestling. It used to be that, you know, at about 30, you could kiss your career goodbye 15, mm-hmm. 20 years ago. Now women are in their 40s, up to 45, and they look good, and they've had kids. But, you know, we work smarter, not harder, and we're cutting out other sides of the business for ourselves. Like, mm. like I kind of want to be the woman that represents women as well as a wrestler and maybe a writer and maybe backstage. And, you know, these are... These aren't careers that are there for us right now, but we're make we're making them. And if yeah. you ever have any professional wrestling questions, please, I would love to be the one to help oh, you. Yeah, for sure. Yay! Yeah, cool. Thank well, you. It was <laughs> lovely talking to you. 
Thank you so much. It was and, fun. Yeah. Oh, good. I'm so glad. 